Yes. Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to the March 2nd meeting of the Village of Rhinebeck Planning Board. The uh, first item on the agenda is Zephyr, Caitlin Millard, 28 East Market Street. A sign application. They're moving from West Market Street to East Market Street. Are they here? Are they here? Ryan? I think so. Someone on a telephone is trying to speak. Um, and I no, don't know if Chuck they have. Marco. Okay, it's Chuck DeMarco. I'm on the phone for uh, Pear Paulson's uh, special permit. Okay, Chuck, you're you're not you're okay. not up yet. You're you're next. We're uh, this is uh, the Sam sign application before you, Chuck. Chuck, so just <coughs> hold, hold, hold tight. Is that is that one of our one of our uh, Zephyr people? Um, I don't know. Because it's not Caitlin. Um, I did receive from one of the other owners uh, that they'd be participating. Um, well, if they're not here, we can move on to the pool and then come back. You sure they're not here? Um, no one's sending me a message or unmuting. Um, right. Well, if the uh, Peer Paulson person, <laughs> I said that fast three times. If the Pierre Paulson person is here and the Zephyr is not here, why don't we move on to the pool? And we'll come back to the ladies if they, uh, if they make it, okay? All right, Chuck, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so you can, you can start with your presentation. I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure what you need from me. Um, I know... <laughs> Pear wants to put a, an in-ground pool in the backyard, and I wanted to get the building permit in, and Ryan told me that we had to put this special permit in because you're in a historical area. Right. So, so, so I, um, that's exactly I, where I'm at. Sure, Chuck. So, so just go over some of the particular um, items of information, like what type of, of, of pool, the dimensions, and sort of uh, where it's going to go as um as it relates to uh the property did everybody get yep, the absolutely map? yeah there should be a map there and uh, the pool is going to go uh towards the center of the backyard well in the backyard located behind his his garage uh, i think it was approximately i don't remember off the top of my head probably like uh 20 feet maybe from the garage it's uh 16 by 32 foot a vinyl liner, steel wall pool. And he, he wants it just to go and do laps back there. Um, I've got it, the way we've got it located, it's 14 feet off of the side property that's adjacent to the garage, the side property line. Then he's got all kinds of footage on the rear rear end of the lot and uh, the other side of the lot. All right, so it's very, um, like I said, it's a big lot and it looks like it's very, quite you know far from the street. It's, it's certainly not. He, oh, he's way off. back off the street. Um, yeah, he's got his house and he's got the driveway that goes back to the, the garage behind the little barn there, garage behind the house. And the pool's actually going to sit pretty much behind that, that garage. Um, we're going to go and put the equipment in the rear corner of his garage, yeah, except yeah. for the heater, because the heater is a heat pump, requires uh, ambient air from outside. So that's going to sit right outside the garage here in that rear corner. And uh, it's a shallow pool. It's only going to be like four and a half foot deep. Um, like I said, primarily he wants it for a lap pool. Okay. And it must be far from the houses of the neighbors. They're not on this uh, survey. But uh, yeah, the houses must be close yeah. to the street. Yeah, actually, the, on the... Uh, the north side of the of the lot, it's just it's all wide open over there, that property line, and I, it was like forty feet or more from the the rear end of the lot, I believe. 
I don't have my map in front of me. I should have grabbed it. Yeah, 40, 40, 44. 44 feet. Yeah. And then the, the, other, the adjacent lot on the south side, he had uh, all kinds of room there also. Right. And there'll be a, the is there a fence around it? Will there be? Yes, he's working with a, a fence contractor himself. Okay. He's definitely going to be fenced in. Um, he's going to put a, a, a deck around it when the ground is ready for, to accept a deck after it's all built. And uh, yeah, he was hoping to be able to get rolling there in the spring once once the thaw and stuff's out, beginning of April sometime. Does anyone have any comments on it? Is the proposed deck wood, slate, brick? I mean, it's, you know, oh, we just looking, heard it yeah, now. He's looking at pavers. Yeah, he was looking at doing pavers. Yeah, you know, we're just going to need to and have that as part, of the, as part of the site plan, too. You, you know, you're springing that on us as we're approving it, but that's also, you know, I mean, it's... I don't think he's got that all totally nailed in. Right. I see he was talking like a four-foot deck around the pool. And then just having between the pool and the uh, garage be be paved just so he's not walking in, in sod or dirt. Oh. So it's a path, not a... Yeah, so just basically four foot around the perimeter of the pool. I think that would be considered then, a landscape feature. Yeah. I, I, I think Chuck's terminology is not... Uh, a physical deck around the entire pool. I think it's sort of a landscape feature of a, of a path or some sort of L element so it's not grass or uh, gra gravel. This is a huge lot. Right. I think there's a problem with lot coverage. It's a pretty big lot. And I guess my question would be where is the, um, the, the village sewer line? Is that is that on his property, is on the neighboring property? I mean, it's not indicated on this map here that I can see. Okay. I know there, there is a line that goes through, through his yard and around the backside of the pool. I think Jeff Decker uh, relocated it last year, or maybe it, was, it might not have been last year. It might have been before that when they were doing work. Now, when I talk um, about his sewer line, we're talking about the village main sewer line runs along the rear property line of a lot of these houses as it heads up towards uh, Aster. Um, I, I could jump in here, um, Mike, as far as I know, based on the maps that are present here in the department, I believe back here by this hedge, um, back here in this area is where um, this uh, line exists. Um, that goes pretty much um, along the uh, edge of the rear property lines of, of these properties on Montgomery, on Montgomery Street. And the, the, the easement that is on the books is how many feet? 25 feet? 2015 I, I don't know what the I, you know I think probably if if the board wants to have um, some some clarification on this I believe Chuck would be more than happy to correspond with the chief wastewater operator prior to any machinery uh, okay. you know yeah. go, going into the ground and we can always get a, a letter from the chief wastewater uh, uh, operator yeah. to make sure that you know nothing's okay impacted or or or, da or damaged so ryan make a note because it's 44 feet from the head so he's probably way out of the area but it should be double checked i always get nervous when they put a pool in one of the other houses along there uh, on montgomery street and we wanted to double check that uh so chuck did you get all that that we need to coordinate yes, with I, chief I, I, chief wastewater i did actually, operator i did and actually i do know there's a there is a, a, I believe it's a sewer manhole or something back there. Yep. yep. And now with the snow, I'm, I, I can pull off the pull off the measurements I have and get an idea how far from the back of the pool to to where that line. Cause I know that's a horizontal line that runs across the yard. I think it's uh, goes right. north south. Yes. Yeah. That, yes. Correct. And uh, you yeah, can I, I can get I can pull. 
Or maybe you could stop over to double check. You want to make sure that, you know, nothing goes wrong. That's the main sewer line sure. of the village. For sure. Because I know Jeff Decker, he, he retired into that line, and he's the one that's going to be digging the pool also. Sure. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he, he knows right where all that but stuff is But we can coordinate, you, you know, just to cover the bases, Chuck, to be safe. We, we, we can sure. coordinate uh, with the chief wastewater operator. He's very uh, flexible in scheduling just, just to mark er, er, everything out. And I'm pretty sure that Jeff would also do dig safe uh, prior to breaking ground. So. Oh, absolutely. And how many feet do we need between there and, uh, and a pool wall or water? I, I don't know. There's, there's a, it's, it's on some maps, but it should be on this survey, um, but, uh, but it's not. So we'll have to just double check. Right. I don't know the exact feet. Like okay. Michael said, it could be 15, 20, 25 feet, something like that. I uh, think we but, can get confirmation from the chief wastewater operator. Chuck on okay. on on the necessary distance between the pool and uh, the manhole and 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 this and this line. So that sounds Jeff, great. If you want to pass him my phone number, I'd be happy to meet him anytime out there. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Good. Does anybody else have any other comments about the pool? In terms of the fencing. Um, in the fencing section of this code, it says wire fencing, including chain link fencing is prohibited in the Rhinebeck Historic District. So any pool right. enclosure fence, which I assume you're gonna to have to have for, for fire safety and all that, um, is not gonna be able to be chain link or wire. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think Pear had, uh, was, had that in mind. And I know he was talking to some different fence people, but I, that's, that, that was with his, you know, his call on, on what he was gonna do with that. But I'll, I'll give him a shout and just to make sure that he's aware of the, those restrictions because uh, I, I got a feeling he is. But uh, I'll, I'll let him know for sure. So you say this is an in ground. They're going to dig this in ground and it's four and a half feet deep? Yeah, the pool's going to be four and a half foot deep uh, altogether. The, our, my pool walls are actually uh, three foot six, and the and steel the panels that bolt together. Uh -huh. And the uh, looks like from the north edge is a 14 foot setback, and you said you were going to put about a four foot apron around the pool. That's what he was talking about, yeah. Because um, the, the the safety covers you use for the winter time, yes. they pretty much require a three foot. You know, some people just put them in grass, the spikes for them, but that doesn't really they're not right. really guaranteed safe like that. And having so, a, a four foot deck around the pool, three to four foot deck around the pool would uh, allow mm -hmm. it to be secured properly. Right. So, and Ryan, you mentioned this would be considered a landscaping object. Is there, is there some like a 10 foot setback or some requirement with any type of uh, hard surround, whether it's pavers or concrete or whatever? I think we would have to get a, a determination from the zone, zoning enforcement officer if um, some type of feature like, like, like that would be an impact to the setback. If it went, it says 14 feet. If it went past yes. four feet, then you have a problem. You might have a problem. I don't know. We don't have a, we'd have to check with somebody because we don't have a zoning enforcement officer right now. But, but what uh, Ryan was referring to was he wants a, a paved path from the okay. side of the pool into the garage uh, you know, area patio, so it doesn't have to walk in the grass or the mud. Mm -hmm. right. That's a landscape feature. Normally, it's to a structure, something above the ground, not a patio. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think it matters, but like a driveway can be in the setback. Right. You know, it's not, it's not because it's not above the ground, so to speak. So, but we we can double check that if he wants to go beyond four four feet. Because someone has to come and inspect this, and we have a temporary building inspector um, who can go out and look at this thing and make sure it complies with everything. So I'd be happy to work with him just so that uh, you know before he go, goes and makes other, the plans uh, permanent with a contract to somebody that he, you know, he stays within whatever is recommended. Right. Well, when you get the building permit, um, they can the building guy can double check the plans and double check everything before you start digging. 
Okay. Uh, Orion Hotel, and we have to make sure of where the sewer is, what the, the patio isn't going to be, and, you know, well, it can be a little bit into the setback, I guess. It's not above the ground, and that everything is, you know, set. And the yeah, it says set. here in 120-12 uh, that uh, certain features may encroach up to seven feet into the rear yard in all districts. It doesn't say anything about side yard. It's odd. Uh, and included in that is um, grade level patios. So certainly you can get within seven feet, uh, you, uh, within three feet of the property line with a patio and assume that you're in good stead. Okay, that sounds great. Is there a fence along the north property line? I mean, is that where there, the Yeah. Um, it says post I and rail believe, fence on the map I, in the front. That's all I believe it is on the side. Uh, the, the rear, the rear and the, uh, the south side are all all fenced off. Um, that north side, I just think it's. I've only been there a couple times to, to lay it out in the backyard, but I think that's just a a regular fence over there right now. Yeah, they might it's just a, some privacy. I don't know. That's. Up, up to them, I suppose. Well, I think it, it's going to have to be. Um, it, 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 it's a building code issue that you have to have a fence around right. the pool. Around the pool, even if there oh, isn't yeah. a fence along the property line, there'll have to be a fence around the pool. Right. Well, for sure, he's aware of that. Yeah, he's yeah. all set to do that too. Yeah. And the fence can't be over six feet. Yep. So it seems to me we could. If the board is willing, we could uh, approve this with a couple conditions. One that that that, that doesn't um, encroach upon the sewer easement in the rear to be determined by the village, and two that the fence can't be um, wire or chain link. Absolutely. All right. Are you making that motion, John? Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. So with those two conditions, all those in favor? Uh, Michael Gee. Aye. John Clark. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. James Davidson. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Okay. Well, good luck. Ryan, Ryan will make sure that uh, the building inspector, the Plumbing, I mean the uh, uh, wastewater person, and everything to check this thing out, so we don't have any accidents along the way. No, absolutely. I'd like to hook up with a uh, wastewater man as soon as I can. Yes. Just to make sure we get the, the clearance file before we even cut close to digging. Sure thing, Chuck. Uh, give me a call tomorrow at the office at some point. Okay, Ryan. Thank you. You're very welcome, Chuck. You have a good night. All right, you too, fellas. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Good luck. Is uh, okay, Zephyr thanks. here? Ryan, do you see Zephyr? Oh, here. Hi. Oh, Marilyn um, Morris. Yeah. You are one of the owners? I am not. I manage the store. I'm the manager. Okay. Do you have something in the file that says you're able to represent the owners? Yes. There's right. one owner, Caitlin Millard. We have to have something in writing. Is there something in writing in the file? Uh, I believe so, but I'm not sure. You should ask uh, Brian. Yeah. We ask did Brian. receive um, authorization, but I think the only authorization was from um, the power of attorney uh, for the landlord, the owner of the building. Um, I don't think I have anything. Um, from Caitlin? From Caitlin. Well, the owner of the building says that Zephyr is authorized to come to the planning board? Yes. Well, I don't know. If, I, I mean, yeah, uh, yes. Two owners uh, and the manager. I guess they're one. They're. We could, I think we could consider them her Zephyr, a Zephyr representative. 
we have permission for Zephyr to come to the planning board. Okay. So we had a pre-meeting last week and we had some, I think Michael pointed out some calculations for the sign. You have maximum sign building frontage, American financial, you have 14 and a half square feet of signage available to you. And that's two windows, a door, and the hanging sign. Does that, the yeah, window the, 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 the two square feet each, the door? Well, the, 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 two, the two windows, if you're familiar with the building, it's two large, win I sent a lot of photographs also. It's two large windows and then a center door that are all glass. There is, um, yeah, my um, sign maker's uh, illustration. And basically on the, as we face the building, what, the one thing I'd like to add on the upper right hand corner uh, where the uh, right well below that actually not right there uh, just a little bit to the side of the mul white molding uh, the uh, perpendicular sign that we now presently have at 11a West Market it's approximately two feet in diameter it is uh, a very soft moss gray green and has in lowercase just the word Zephyr written that's a different bracket than in the first picture. Yeah, this is, I don't know what, uh, the bracket uh, is just, um, you know, we don't have the bracket yet. So it would just be, it would be identical to the other brackets that are on the street. And what is the height? The height, how far above? Yeah. The, uh, an estimate would be nine feet. Find Zephyr 24 inches out, 18 inches high. Well, this is, I, I, that, that was an early estimate. That was when I was just writing the first uh, so it, information, it, but I, I'm, the sign, as I look at it and measure it, it's, a, it's closer to two feet in diameter. And how high is it off the ground, from seven to nine feet? Well, I would say the bottom of it would be, yeah, it would be approximately nine feet. Um, it would be right exactly at the same height as all of the other perpendicular signs that are on that street. They're all like at a uniform height. And it would be placed approximately uh, at the same level as the white molding on the outside of the building on the right-hand side. Okay. The required dimensions, it can't be uh, less than seven feet above the sidewalk or 12 feet above the sidewalk. Okay, then it would be exactly seven feet above. They're all, if you go down and look down that street, they're all the same height, approximately. And I would say it's going to be then seven feet above the sidewalk at the bottom of the sign. Right. So. The window is two, two square feet, two square feet. The door is three square feet. That's seven, leaving you seven square feet. And the sign is like two by two, which is four square feet. So that's like 11. So you're under the 14, it looks like. Mm -hmm. did you, did, Michael was the one that did the calculations. I'm trying to find his okay. note here. Is that what you figured, Michael? Or you had a, you had a problem? You didn't think it was all it was it was too much signage? No, it's not too much signage. It's just that the numbers aren't matching what the reality is. And and my grandson was here today and took the the dry erase board and erased all my things that were on it. But I'm looking at two and a half times half equals two. No, 
it, it doesn't. It's like, I don't know, one and a quarter. Would, one, I don't have my calculator here yeah, either. but 1.75 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the numbers have to be recalculated to what they really are. And then on the, the one drawing, she had 18 inches as the diameter. I went and looked at it. And it's like, I think it's closer to 22 to 24, but I don't, you know, I. That's just what I just said. It's close. Yeah. Four square feet. So I, I, I mean, you're you're under, but we'd like to we'd like all of the numbers to be mathematically correct and be accurate to what is being presented. Because we have to have it for the records. Because if someone else has to hang a sign and wants some signage on the building, we need to know how much of the remaining fourteen and a half feet that's available you used, and it is so. It's one point. I just did it. It's one point. It's not two feet. It's 1.25, 1 1.25, and then three and a half, three and a half, but three by half a foot. Half a foot is one and a half, so that's again wrong. And two by two is four square feet. So it's less. So it's less. So it's, it's, it's not a square, it's a circle. It's a circular, it's right. pi r squared for the. <laughs> right, less than four feet. So it's, it's a one of four feet and then less than four feet. So it's about seven, seven and change. So we should, we should get the accurate calculation because that would leave like seven and change left should someone else in the building want to have some additional signage. We have to be able to get this calculation. I assume the sign for A, B, and C above is correct. Jen Martin, Ameriprise Financial, and James O'Neill. So we need to get this corrected. So I think the uh, circular one is 3.14, because the radius is one or about one. All right, so it's about seven and a half feet. So we should get not, you know, we should get that corrected. Remaining footage for additional signs is incorrect too. Brian, can you work with them and get and get this sheet corrected so we have the correct building allocation. Ryan? Are you speaking to me? No, no, oh, sorry. Uh, speaking to me, um, the clerk. Um, so, yes, I, I can work with them. Um, so it'd be, it looks like to me it'd be 1.25, 1 1.25, 1 1.5. So that's four square feet for the windows and door. And then two times two is less than four. Um, so that would leave, subtract that from the 14 if we know the signage available, should one of the other businesses want to add an additional sign, we have to know how much is left. So does someone want to email me those, those measurements and I can work with them to um, clean up the application and get it a little bit more um, po polished, and then we can. Yeah, I can talk to you about it tomorrow. So it's you, John. You said three point one four. Well, it's actually it, from this drawing, it looks like the circle is eighteen inches, and it's twenty four feet from the yes. face of the building. Well, so. no, it's twenty. It's the circle. The circular sign is really about twenty four inches. Okay, so then it's three point one four. I think. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, what was the four square feet for? I'm sorry. You said the circular sign was four square feet. No, no, no. the other sign. The, the other hand. gentleman said it was 3.14. Right. And so it's not four square feet, the circle. And then two and a half times 0. 0.5 is 1.25. Yeah, so okay. 1.25, 1.25 for the two windows. The door, uh, half of three is one and a half. Right. So it's 1.5. So the when you add them up, that's four square feet for the th two windows and door. Right. And if we had 3.14, that becomes 7.14, leaving over seven square feet left on the building. So I'll, I'll go over this with Ryan tomorrow. Okay. And, uh, the reason I just put, a, and I wrote approximate also, was because um, I, I wanted to err on the side of more as opposed to less. Right. Uh, and I was not realizing that you all were calculating to such a degree in order to 
allow fellow uh, store uh, merchants there to right. add extra signage if they wanted. Because it's so I, just, I just made a basic approximation over what I knew we were actually going to use. It's because it's 30 and a half. We want to subtract the other three businesses and you, and then Ryan will know what's left. If somebody comes into the office and says that, oh, Ameriprise Financial would like to put another a sign in the window or a door sign or something, that, oh, we've got 7.14 left, or, or whatever else, well, the reverse, it's 7.36 left um, for their calculation if they need additional signage. Okay. So I'll talk to Ryan, we'll go over this tomorrow. Okay. Um, so this this drawing doesn't this drawing we're looking at now will not be included in the application. This drawing? Well, I can change the numbers on the drawing. I mean, uh, Ryan has all of the material. It's this was yeah, no, I'm, no. I'm just asking, because if it is, it needs to be corrected. It's showing the diameter at 18 inches, and it's really 24. That's and it, what and it's showing it and it's showing the distance from the face of the building is 24, and it's probably yeah, that, that 30. Would, that would be corrected. Yeah. So okay. Ryan needs need that, and then if Ryan needs a photograph after it's hung for, to put in the folder. Yes, okay. So you've got to fix that. I'll fix the calculation with Ryan, and then uh, there's no lighting on it. No. Yeah, could I see that picture once more, Ryan? Sure. Can you show him the picture of the actual Sign. Uh, yeah, I just I was curious about the top where the bracket is on the top of that picture. It's showing nine feet. Of the, okay, that's all right. That's nine inches height that's of the. All right. I, okay, I thought it was, I thought it was showing the the top of the bracket to be nine feet, which would have put the sign below seven feet from it. All right. No. Never mind. A lot mind. of the sign has to be above seven feet. You have to yeah. make sure of that. Yeah. Yeah, that should be written on the uh, on drawing too. Yeah. Okay. He mounted above seven feet. Uh -huh. Might have some New York Knickerbocker to come visit Ryan Beck. We don't, we don't want him to bop his head. <laughs> oh, I think I got a lot of Zephyr pages, but I think that we have every, we have everything down here. Anybody have any other questions about Zephyr? Okay, we have a motion to approve the Zephyr sign. So moved. We have, we have a second? second, second. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, uh, Michael Gee. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. John Clark. Aye. James Davidson. Aye. David Miller, aye. Good luck in your new location. Thank you. May I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, so with uh, submitting the uh, exact uh, mathematical uh, numbers uh, on the measurements and then with the, um, you know, clarified, can we go forward with the signage then if you've approved it? We just approved it. It's just we just okay. got to... You, so let's go you, forward, then. The calculation is lower. Yeah. Not, not that there's a problem. It's less than you say it is. So we'll yes. work that out for the building signage, not, yeah. not for you, so that the, Ryan knows how much is left should someone want more space. Okay, great. Thank you the, so the, much. The, paper, the paperwork needs to be corrected for the record yeah. so yeah. that yes. if, if anyone else comes in, we'll have the official okay. uh, calculations. Right. Okay. The, uh, also, just to say, Caitlin, ha uh, Caitlin Millard ha uh, tested positive for uh, COVID. Like, oh no! Yeah, no, she's she's okay, uh, and she'll be uh, quarantined for another week. But uh, she did test positive, and you know she's feeling a little under the weather, but nothing terrible, terrible. So, well, tell her uh, we hope. Uh, She's feeling better. And, to see and I, I tested well. negative and I just had my first uh, vaccination on Sunday. So, yeah. Good. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. Thank you so much. Come see us. Bye. You're welcome. All right. The, uh, now we have a discussion. Uh, where, 
or rather James is there. We had a, uh, Ryan, can you turn James? Uh, Hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Um, so this is the first house next to the cemetery on South Street. And um, it's in the historic district. And you wanted to do a bunch of different things. And uh, I guess we can talk about them. You want to do something to the garage. You want to remove a uh, some apartments from the back. Sure. And you want to change some windows. Right. So shall we just go one by one through the the different things? Uh, well, I think they all should be pretty uh, uh, pretty unobjectionable. But um, so the garage renovation. The garage is currently uh, a cinder block structure it's pretty ugly with rotten old garage doors so what we're just going to do is clad it um with clapboards um and uh um paint it and put on new garage door or put on new doors garage doors and human doors um so pretty straightforward just making it nicer what's already there the only thing we're doing that's changing that's additive in any way is just putting a little overhang above the door. Um, Ryan, um, Darren sent you, unfortunately the submission has the wrong image of the garage. Um, if you got it, Darren sent you a couple hours ago the right image of the garage. Yes, with the new elevations, yes. Yes, and it's just with smaller, um, it's, it's a much smaller porch. Um, Off the front, above yes. the doors? Okay. Yeah. So, so again, I think we just use sort of very traditional looking garage doors to replace the sort of generic garage doors that are there. We're putting in a glass four light door and we're adding a little awning to, you know, basically protect the door from water. And you're not making any alterations to the physical building itself because it's in the setbacks. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing except cladding it to get rid of the ugly cinder block look. Okay. There is a provision in the historic district that uh, window proportions are supposed to be more vertical than horizontal. So, Except for specialty windows like transom windows. So I don't know. Um, we've the, enforced that on past garage doors that if you're going to have little panes, they should be more vertical than horizontal. Does that apply to that applies to garage? That doesn't really necessarily make sense in a garage door application. Again, it just I, it, I, I knew that that provision in the code, but right. it doesn't make sense to me because that's sort of not the way garage doors work. Well, we're talking about the individual panes, oh. not the overall window proportions. But, you know, we the board has the right to make exceptions for things like that if they want to. But I'm just saying okay. that that's a provision in the code that oh. we have to deal with. I see. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it in those terms. However, I would argue that in carriage doors, you know, this is a fairly conventional, traditional kind of, you know, fenestration pattern. Um, certainly the intention is not to make it look modern. Okay. Well, if the board's okay with making the exception for the garage doors. Uh, um, but what material are the garage doors? Uh, they're going to be painted. Um, uh, so it's like either, uh, I don't, I'm assuming it's wood or some, you know, material that's meant to look like wood when painted. Uh, it's, it's not a vinyl or anything like that. Okay. And the, and the clapper, what material? Uh, I believe that's going to actually be a, a wooden, wooden clapper. Mm -hmm. I believe it's pine.
So a wood or hardy plank would be the options. Right, yeah. We're not big fans of hardy plank, so I'm assuming it'll just be a pine wood okay. clapboard. No lighting? Um, we, uh, we were gonna put a, a down light, um, you know, uh, on the bottom side of the awning to make it just minimal. We didn't really wanna look a light. Anybody have any other questions about the garage? All right, let's move on to the, there's only a discussion so far. We'll have an official meeting next time. What is the next thing that you want to do? So it might be better to do this out of sequence just because of the, the one thing that'll take a little more explanation. So we also are proposing to replace the roof. Uh, the roof is currently a gray asphalt shingle. Um, and we're going to do it in a standing seam copper. Twenty-one inch spacing, standing seam copper. It'll be copper and it'll turn green. Um, fifteen years or so, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the same roof we put on East Market Street, um, the the big Victoria the building that used to be Bookouts. Um, that also has the same standing scene copper in the same spacing. All right, what else do you want to do to the building? Um, the window replacement, um, they're currently a very cheap vinyl um, window. Um, where we had a previous approval um, and the approval was gotten when we added some windows uh, a little over five years ago. We renovated a, a screen porch, which you can see on the renderings on the, or a glass, glassed in porch on the side of the building. Um, you can see it's the glass, glass porch and we renovated those big tall Victorian windows. Those are approximately eight foot tall double hung windows. When we did that, we sought approval because even though those were only two, you know, it was, a, it was a spot project, we wanted to anticipate the future renovation. So we got approval from the town to, um, to change all of the buildings to match the windows that we were putting in then. So we had approvals to do two over two double hungs as are shown here. Um, through some reason, you know, we, we let it, uh, we, it was five years and it should have expired, but for some reason it got canceled as opposed to expired. Um, so I believe it's just a technicality, but um, as I said, we had previously been approved. And frankly, that's why we put in the other windows to be in this language. What happened to the six over six windows that were on the building? Uh, well, first of all, they are um, vinyl, um, and so the intention is to remove them. And secondly, you know, from my vision of the building, uh, I actually think the, the more appropriate window, although I think it's debatable, the more appropriate window is a two over two. Do we have any historic photos of this building? Well, we have 1979 where it goes on the historic register that says, it has these really nice six over six windows. Well, but that was before replacement windows were put. So there's two issues here. One is that the replacement windows are vinyl and literally just awful. Um, they're the cheapest windows you can buy. Well, somebody replaced the historic six over six windows with vinyl six over six windows. Yes. Um, historically, uh, that was before I bought it. Um, the reason why, I'll tell you the architectural reason why, um, I think like many houses that, you know, you see of this period, the house was early American and the appropriate window, obviously for an early American, call it 18, I'm assuming it's 1800 to 1820, that kind of band, would have been probably the six over six. However, um, 
you know, there was, the house has gone extensive renovations. And in my opinion, the most dominant architectural feature, the house is sort of a plain Jane. The most dominant architectural features are the front porch and the side, you know, oversized bay window. Um, the front porch is clearly a Victorian, sort of an Italianette. And the, the two over two is much more appropriate to the language of the dominant feature of the house, which is the historic Victorian Italianette front porch. So in my opinion, although the house nominally and you know, technically was older than that, um, I think that you know, in the 1850s when the front porch was put on, they changed the language and it's, you know, it's most you know, dominant historic character is defined by its front porch. <clears throat> Are all the windows been replaced? There's no original windows left? There's no original windows in the house whatsoever. And there weren't any when we got them. I was concerned because 1979 says the beautiful six over six windows, but these are not them. Those are not them, yeah. first of all. Um, and secondly, like, I mean, as you see the house, you know, when the house is properly, you know, renovated it, without those ugly, you know, vinyl shutters that are on it currently that are too small. Um, once it's properly renovated, the house is going to read much more Victorian than it's going to read, um, you know, early American. And I think that was a decision that was made in 1850, in all honesty. And you have no shutters. What's that? You have no shutters. There will be no shutters, yeah. The, the, his, the historic shutters are gone. Those are just vinyl. <clears throat> Does anyone have any comments about the windows? I would like a site visit just to confirm that, you know, everything that's been explained to us is the actual, because it's set back from the road. You really can't tell from the road, um, you know, what it is. And there's been a lot of work on the inside. I, I, I basically think we need to, you know, take a closer look, not be looking at from the sidewalk, but to go up and, you know, be on the property and take a look at everything just so that, you know, we're sure of everything that's there. We had a pre-meeting last week with Brian, Michael, and myself. We talked about that because our other, our big concern was chopping off a piece of it and adding a piece on. Um, well, let's, can we stick to the windows just for a second? Because yeah. I, I want to yeah. emphasize two things. One is this was approved and we had five years of standing approval that we, on, based on which not only did we do a previous you know, frankly, very expensive renovation that assumed based on that approval to do this whole window scheme. We bought the windows for the sunroom and the tall bay window. Um, but also, we already have purchased all of the windows in this, in this, um, that are going in this house. So, because it was pro previously approved, um, did not think this would be controversial in the well, lead. No, it's just that we saw the six over six, but if they have already been lost. They, they, yeah, they I'm happy lost. for you to confirm that. Um, yeah. But I, I did want to say that these windows have been purchased based on our previous approvals. I do find the, uh, the, the thinking about the Victorian aspect uh, makes sense to me that, uh, that the, the architecture here is that's, that's, that's what it's viewing so out from my point of view yeah the, the window yeah there's there's about 10 other houses in town that um had victorian renovations on earlier buildings and the dominant look of the building has become victorian even though the box um that 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 that's being adorned is probably an early American box. I, I found, ten, I have photos, I have about 10 of them. So I think it's actually well within the language of other houses in Rhinebeck. Now at 108 East Market, they actually had the original uh, eight over eight windows and they were able to uh, send them out and have them reglazed and restored and put back on the building. But if this I, is- I would like nothing more than to have right. the original windows to this building. But you don't um, okay, I would yeah, love that. No. 
but I, I don't know if anyone else says I don't have a problem now that we know the story behind it. I'm okay with the two over two, but um, you know, if if um, if these are um, <clears throat> all vinyl to begin with, I don't think we can ask somebody to go back <clears throat> to a previous period if no. the original windows aren't there. No, I don't think we can. So I guess the biggest thing we're concerned about is what you want, because the question is, the law talks about a demolition permit and a public hearing for a demolition of all or part of a historic building. And so what do you want to, what do you want to demolish on the building? So the building, um, do you want to pull up the image, um, Ryan, if you could, please? So that, do you have the, the images down below, down lower? The current, current condition? No, I mean, there should be photos. No, we, didn't, we never got those. No, I, think I don't just, think Darren or Emily sent them to me, James. Are they not in this scroll? They're no. not. Uh, uh, hold on. Let yeah. me hold on. I did see something from Emily earlier. Just um, hold on. Because I, yeah, I did. You might be looking at an older version because it's on the, the document that I have. They're right there. Yeah, that's the. That's the document. So what you're looking at here, if you look first at the, the photograph to the far right, um, the one that has the green lawn in it, um, what you're seeing is the, the, the first gable on the far right of that is the part of the original structure. That's remaining and being preserved. The second part where you, what you're seeing in the foreground is the screen porch which has already been renovated. And what is directly behind that, if you, it's hard to see behind the trees, but that part right there, perfect, Ryan, thank you. That is part of the original house and that's remaining. So those are all, you know, pre, you know, turn of the century parts of the, you know, probably, you know, 1820 circa house. To the, the, the section to the left, is a new addition that was built, I think, in the 70s or maybe 80s. Um, it is- 18 or 19? 18, I'm sorry, 1980s. 1980s. It's two apartments, new built. It's built like a condominium. Um, it's separated with a demising wall from the historic house. That's an internal cinder block demising wall. Um, that's new construction. Again, like I said, I think it's built in 1970 or 1980. It, it has no on. historic yeah. value. And in fact, it's completely detracting from the historic value of the house. So what we're doing is proposing ripping down this 1980s awful addition that is really ruining this gorgeous, you know, early American home. But as we did that, we assumed that, um, you know, first of all, we just need a wee bit of extra space, which is we're adding this little lean-to structure. Yeah, you can see it in profile, um, hanging off the back of the house on the two renderings on the right. Um, that lean-to structure uh, for us was supposed to have the language of a, you know, like a, 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 a woodshed. Um, and it, it's meant to be very low and minimal and unobtrusive. <clears throat> But um, so in other words, what we're taking down is whatever it is, 1600 square feet of 1980s junk. And we're putting up about 100 square feet of something that's meant to have a language of a tool shed. Uh, I'm sorry, um, a wood a mud shed. room. What's that? A mud room? It's just like, it's just, a, it's just for the, where we're putting the laundry. The, the, the layout of the house doesn't really allow for an easy way, place to put in like laundry, pantry, closet. Um, and so it's just a little, you know, it's actually sort of like what a, a wood room would have been. It's just a little utility functional space. Uh, does the rare addition show up on um, the historic inventory form? Because that way we'd be able to date it. Which rear addition? The one you want to tear down. N when I saw the historic inventory form, I believe it was dated earlier than 
the edition was built. I think it was from 79, wasn't it? 79. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, don't, I, don't recall, I don't recall seeing it. Maybe it well, was that, there. So that would mean it's after 79 and confirms that. Yeah, again, I think the moral of the story is, is that it's sort of, it's sort <clears throat> of bunk and deserves to be ripped down. It, it, if, if it were there, it would have been noted that a modern uh, addition has been added to it and detracted. They would have said something about it. So I assume it was probably built in 1980 or a couple right. of years after that. It has vinyl siding, vinyl win windows, plywood construction, you know, plywood floors, plywood construction. It's very, very, and like I said, the telltale, you know, cement demising wall. So the question for the planning board is, uh, one, do we want to go over there, maybe people are around this weekend or something, I don't know what James or uh, his schedule is, uh, to just walk around the property and look at the garage and look at the what's gonna come off and what's gonna go on and what the windows are gonna change. And, and uh, because one, I think we, we might wanna look at the property and two, we have to make a decision because 1600 square feet is the size of many houses in the village and that chunk is gonna be removed or do we feel confident enough if it wasn't on the 1979 historic register that it's not technically demolishing part of a historic house and we don't need to have a demolition permit with justification in a public hearing? How does the board feel? I, I would like to just physically be on the property and walk around and, and just look at it before I make a decision one, one way or the other. John, Clark? Yeah, I think if we can arrange a time and place to, to take a quicker look, I, I, I'm not that concerned. If it wasn't on the 79 inventory form, I'm, yeah. you know, that was my major question is how old that rear addition is. I haven't been back to look at it. So um, if indeed it's from after 79, then there's, I don't think there's any question that it, you can get a demolition permit for it. Brian, was anything in the folder? Something built in 1980 might have had a mention in, in the folder for 7 South Street. I, I can check uh, just yeah. to remind the board that um, certificates of occupancy were not issued until 1987. Uh, so, um, and you also- You would have had to have gotten a building permit. Uh, this, is, this is true, um, we hope that they filed the building permit back then. Um, One doesn't know. Uh, just to remind everyone back then, the village clerk, the treasurer, and the zoning enforcement officer were all the same person. And um, I believe they shared a building inspector with, with the town. So I Who think knows? the records re retention, I mean, I can serve, certainly check for 7 South Street and see if there was any mention of uh, somebody proposing to do this work or, or completing this work, but um, don't have high hopes. Um, I think it's going to be phenomenal. If you want to, of course, if you want to check it, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's going to be phenomenally. It's sitting on a cinder block foundation. If you look at the slope of the roof of the rear addition, you know, you've seen that slope a million times on every, you know, truss garage that's mm. ever been built. Um, if you just look at the fenestration pattern of the windows, it looks like every, you know, cheap so condominium I, I think building. it is important that we have a walkthrough. Sure. We're allowed to do that as a board sure. if we only talk to you or whoever's there and not talk to each other. We're is allowed to do building that. building occupied now? Uh, yes. Okay, so that means we would have to have a scheduled visit. Right, and, and that would make it be uh, benefit you because if we make the determination that yes, this is clearly a modern thing, we don't have to go through this whole extra process of a historic partial demolition permit, a public hearing. It would just be a site else. plan True. application. No, we'll just like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm back more than happy to, to take you, more than happy to do it. So what are people's schedules? I don't know, um, most of us don't work. John Clark does work sometime. Um, if a Friday or Saturday or, you know, it's supposed to be I can sunny. Make, I'm, I live, we, between me and, and Darren, um, we live, both live here. So we can make it anytime during the week or weekend, whatever works for you guys. 
is this sat like Saturday morning good for people or what what's what's everybody's schedule? Yeah, as, as long as you know it's something like ten or eleven. <clears throat> yeah. So it doesn't break up the whole day. Sure. I do, yeah. do I ten would be ideal if we want to do yeah. something like ten on Saturday. Ten o'clock Saturday sound good to everybody? Good yeah, for me. Sounds, I'm on sounds... my way to I'm on my way to a vaccination on uh, that <laughs> Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, uh, but, well, good, you know, good for you, James. Good, I, I, I'll take your words for it. I'm, um, I'm, I'm good, assuming I don't get a bad reaction to my second vaccination, which I'm getting on Friday. But, but if I do, uh, you guys can do your thing. Otherwise, I'll be there Saturday morning. I just, I do have a question. The reason why, James, you're asking for these approvals is what? That you got approvals more than five years ago on Windows and that approval has expired? Well, no, I, can, that I can jump in here, James. Uh, Jeff, they submitted building permit applications mm -hmm. uh, for this work. And um, based on the information given in the building permit application, it obviously triggered either site plan of approval or at least planning board review because mm -hmm. this is an historical house and it's in the historic overlay district. So just sort of the part and parcel of the process and procedure. That is why, um, you know, James is here and, and, and the art of building is here um, to discuss this with you and obviously to schedule a, um, a site, okay. a site visit. Okay, and 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 you say that you've already purchased these uh, two over two windows. Uh, have you? Are, are all of the windows on the sides going to be new as well as the windows in the front matching? Yes. yes. And are, do they have external muntins? Yes. Yes, they and, have. They're Marvin yes. historic. They're Marvin okay. historic windows, which have yeah. external muntins. And um, to be clear, all of the windows are being replaced, except for the windows that we had already replaced five years ago, which are in the sunroom and the, the okay. extra, the, the tall bay window. And the, um, in the elevation on the top left, is that front door, what is that? It's just a, a solid wood door? It just looks no. like a plane. No, it's, it's, a, it's an oak door that we own. It's, um, we're not sure if we're going to be able to restore it to oak, um, but um, it's a it's a eight foot eight eight and a half foot tall historic oak door with okay. a bevel glass panel. Right, right no, it's, the it's, the exist, it's the existing door. No, it's an it's a a, a, a door that we bought ah. at that happened to fit the rough opening that we had historically. So, but it is a hundred year old, gorgeous hundred year old mm -hmm. door. I you know, just wanted to make sure that wasn't a single pane no, glass no, no, no. Uh, yeah. storm window looking door. And also just, not that you're asked, but the back door is also an oak door that we bought at Zaborski's um, that speaks the same language as the front door. Mm -hmm. So also, my, my question would be, I, I guess a legal question. We can't talk to each other on Saturday morning. Um, and how do we make, if we all agree that we can go ahead on the 16th with site plan approval versus a public hearing on a demolition permit. How do we do that? So I can jump in here, uh, Mr. Chair, 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 Chairman. I think you would all provide me with any comments or somewhat of a, a site visit report to me, and then I can uh, coordinate with the acting uh, CEO as and as well uh, James and and Darren and the art of building to um, uh, begin the uh, site plan procedure. So if we all write to you and say this is a 1980 piece of junk and uh, it's not going to alter the historic nature of the building, we don't have to go through the process of dem partial demolition permit. We can send that all to you, and then the acting CEO can say, okay, the 16th is site plan approval. And then we can have go over these plans officially and, and, and move on to the site plan approval. Okay, that, thank you, Ryan, that's good. So is everybody, we just meet in front of the building at, uh, at, at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Is that okay? Whoever can make it. If Jeff is uh, 
I, uh, <laughs> my, my, are you getting Moderna or Pfizer? Uh, Pfizer. Oh, my second Moderna shot, I had a little, the second, first shot was nothing like a flu shot. My arm was sore. The second one, arm was sore. And for like about six or eight hours, I had a little headache, a little chills, a little achiness mm -hmm. and was gone the next day. So well, that's good. So James, this is Ryan. Should I coordinate with Emily about Saturday at 10 a.m.? Yeah, just, it'll just so I. Who, it'll probably be me who comes. Okay. Um, so no, you don't need. To, but yeah, thank you for offering. But no, um, it'll be me. Um, is it possible to sort of have a, a contingent sort of approval contingent upon the verification of no. certain items? Uh, we we. I mean, if, if there was different circumstances, James, uh, we don't have any formal site plan application before the board. There's, there's nothing signed, uh, there's nothing formally. Um, and I think also the board would require some uh, type of site plan drawings that are stamped, um, that has an architect stamp on it and, and seal. I think that would be something the board would, re, would require. Um, um, so, but the, we know we can plan... take the action if we agree right. that this is a piece of junk and it could come up. We don't have to go through the formal process. There's no reason why we can't do the site plan approval really? on uh, the uh, the 16th. Great. Um, you to get your application in and <clears throat> get the correct get the correct drawings with the app because we've got a lot of different drawings. The, the real drawings, the final copy of them. Attached to us, we can all have a copy of it. If Ryan can get it to us, send it to us Friday or something, we sure. can all print it out and have it in our hands as we walk around. That'd be great. We'll, we'll <clears throat> jump on that. One other thing um, I want to add is our fifth point. We have not yet submitted, but just giving you guys a heads up, we're proposing putting in a fence, um, basically a six foot fence, wooden. Um, the one variance we're going to go for um is we were asking for an eight foot fence um on the rear of the property because of cvs uh, <laughs> absolutely because of cvs uh they're terrible neighbors and um it's ugly to look at and they keep the property a mess and we're always cleaning rubbish off the lawn so. point, point that out and that's another thing we'll look at saturday morning <clears throat> to uh you know that that to, yeah. But that had to, Brian, that's going to have to be a, a variance. We don't have, we don't have discretion to. That Unfortunately, to not. No. Yeah. No, and we understand that it's a variance. I just wanted to, in in the context of talking about this, I did want to just highlight that is but something. There's no, there's no rush on that because that would no. be a, a final thing at the end of the project. Right. So no, that there isn't a rush on that at all. Well, we have we approved an eight foot fence uh, over at Esther Home. To you know, uh, for security purposes, to prevent people from getting out, and so we've done that in the past. Yeah. Um, we we could you know make a recommendation, but yeah. a good thing to look at that. I'm sure it's yeah. awkward being uh, the the cemetery is you have quiet neighbors on one side, but the CBS <laughs> parking lot you don't. Exactly. <laughs> the six foot fence can't go beyond the front plane of the building. Yes, the six foot fence stops at the, you know, it sets a foot in from the front plane of the building. All right. And the only other thing I wanted to say is on your plans, make sure you put in um, the type of siding and the fact that it'll match the historic, you know, for the mud room, that it'll match the siding on the original building. Surely. And the garage will be the same. And you have to, if you, if you slice this modern thing off, you have to restore Actually, no, we don't. Um, no. Oddly, the siding there? is still there. Great. Underneath, um, you know, as with vinyl, you know, so many of our projects with, that have had vinyl siding or major work done, we often find that that's actually done us a favor and preserved. And in this case, the original siding uh, is certainly under the vinyl siding and under and behind the, the, um, the cinder block wall. So we're not Great. actually... Um, and then one thing, um, uh, uh, Mr. Clark, it's, it's John, right? John Clark? Yes. Yeah, John. Um, the um, one thing is that I do think just because of the scale of the building, 
I do think we've proposed to go down a little bit in the scale of the siding on the garage than on the main building, simply because it felt too big to replicate. It's a much smaller building, but I mean, it would be a similar clapboard, certainly. What about the mudroom? The mudroom would be the same as the house because it's part of the house. Yeah, but I, did, I do think we sh shrunk it um, on, the on the garage. I don't have problems. It's a separated. Yeah, exactly. Far away. Replicate, of course. Just put the materials on the, on the plans. A lot of people omit that, and we need to have that documented. Yes. We'll and do. John, do we, do we need the color also so that we don't get an electric lime green house like that? <clears throat> on we don't do colors. Yeah. I can't. I can't forget that electric lime greenhouse on Mulberry. Yeah. It just burned into my we, memory. We the one thing you see this old house and it says we have to go to the planning board and get you know uh, one of the, one of these eight historic colors, but not the same as the house on either side of us. We don't do colors in Rhinebeck. It's not okay. in the code. Well, it actually, I, there I, is it, I thought on, it was. There is a thing on the code on colors. There, yeah. <clears throat> I thought it's so. It's kind of general and vague. <laughs> No, it just says you can't put on um, fluorescent neon metallic, that sort of thing. So it uh, prevents right. the lime green, but doesn't prescribe that it has to be white or blue or pale or whatever. Have a beautiful brand new black house on Platt Avenue. With black, uh, yeah. John's yeah. his head. Yes. With yeah. black windows. Well, next to the Swiss chalet. So we have uh, two weird looking houses on Platt Avenue now. Yeah. Just for the the house will be white and top and the garage will be painted essentially a very um incredibly deep deep navy blue nice mainly to make it go away it's just such an ugly mm -hmm. little building we're just gonna paint it dark so that you don't see it quite as much all right no they're good you got it's, it's your guys always do good work i, I saw you drop the uh, south street barn onto its foundation so you're making some progress there. Yeah, it stayed up in the air a little longer than we wanted, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's a, that's an incredibly fun project. It's a spectacular building. Um, yeah. I run by that building every other day and I keep, I slow down and peek inside to see how it's coming. Well, the issue was we couldn't, um, we couldn't do all these things. We couldn't um, set it down until we had the floor decking in because of, we were afraid of hot frost heave compressing the walls, the cement walls inward. So we basically had to wait until we put the deck down for the floor so that we could backfill. And once we backfilled and did that, then we could set the building down. So it was just this crazy sequence that got caught up with the bad weather. Yeah. I think it's gonna look nice when it's done. Okay, yeah. so we'll see you guys at, at 10 o'clock. We'll walk around the property and then we'll, we'll send, as Ryan made a good suggestion, we'll send them an email. I, you know, whatever, whatever, our, so we can bring a pencil and paper, write it down, but just talk to Darren or James, not each other. Very good. Okay. We we'll see everybody you, Saturday morning. Thank, thank you all. Okay. Have a good night. Good night. So we have, Ryan, we have minutes. We have the minutes for December 15th. And uh, was it Michael, I think, made the note that and you've written that down and on the next to last page. Yes, and I applied Jeff's. Lydia invited uh, the members. Suggestions. Jeff suggested, okay. Yeah, Lydia will follow Lydia. Just to say, Trustee Slaby, blah, blah, I blah. I certainly will. But anybody else have any comments on the minutes of December 15th? I was okay. Yep, right. I'm, I'm fine with them. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of December 15th? I'll make that motion. Um, I'll second the motion. All those in favor, we can do this just aye, ratio. Aye. 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 Minutes of 10, 15 to approve. Then, Have we reproved the November meeting minutes? No. Right? No, you did not. It was November 15th. November 15th. Do we want to make a motion to approve November 15th? Before my time, I think. No, you were there, Jeff. Oh, was I? Okay. Yes. All right. I made some suggestions last time at the last meeting on for changes on November meeting. So uh, I don't know if they got incorporated or not because I didn't see a revised version. 
Oh, you didn't? No. Okay. Uh, did you send me those changes, John? No, I just talked to him about it at the, at the last meeting. Oh, okay. Well, that's possibly one of the reasons why you didn't get it revised. Um, well, it's up, it's up to the board if, if they want to, if you guys want to approve them uh, now with your amendments, John, or do you want to table them till next meeting? Um, it's entirely up, up to you guys. I just want to make sure. John... Minor things. I would, I, if everybody else is okay with them, I'm fine. All right. We'll make a motion to approve the November 15th meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. All right. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll be meeting on the 16th, which is election night. We always meet on election night. And we'll be able to do site plan, hopefully site plan approval, if we all agree that uh, it's a modern thing and not uh, subject to the demolition law. Okay, anybody else have any other comments? So we have a, we have a committee that Lydia has formed to do uh, uh, restaurant plans for this year. And I think we're basically going with the uh, same plan, same design as, uh, uh, last year for this summer, um, and there are several uh, people on the chamber and re restaurant and store owners on, on uh, the committee, and uh, we're just going over this, the same thing, the, the tables and, and chairs out in the street with the, 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 the uh, Molinari doesn't have the bollards because, you know, the barricades because he's doing some construction, so the village is going to get some of those uh, ones you fill with water, I believe, um, and the village board's going to be talking about it next week and getting going on it as soon as possible. I hope we can get those out in the street once the snow is gone and try to, you know, save the restaurants. And I assume that if COVID's gone, that in 2022 things would uh, return to normal and the law would go back into effect. Certainly the street will be open, so there's no way to have anybody eating in the street anymore next year. But if we can save the restaurants and the other businesses this summer, that's what we're trying to do. So as soon as the village board acts on it, we can get you can get a copy of the report of uh, you know, what was decided. But it's pretty much what we had last year. We went over the safety of those big flame, you know, propane heaters and uh, signage and, and uh, the number of tables and chairs out there. But it'll David, be much the same. David, I know one thing uh, Trustee uh, Slaby mentioned to me um, that the planning board could uh, think on is um, the elements of each restaurant's availability to expand their site plan or to expand their seating options. Um, so possibly, I don't know if the membership wants to reach out to Lydia or participate in these upcoming, you know, discussions. Um, I think it would be beneficial um, if, you know, one or two of you were there. What we talked um, about is the have and the have nots. And, you know, Amsterdam has a gigantic backyard. Uh, the Thai restaurant has some, a, you know, a lot of seating in the side yard. Cinnamon does nothing. Uh, the pizza place has a huge backyard. The French restaurant has nothing. So it's, you know, the have and the have nots. And uh, once you go back to 2022, it'd be kind of tricky because we've already been up over the fact that the sidewalks on Market Street are too narrow for tables out there. And uh, Lydia mentioned something about they might, and John will probably love this, try to redesign parallel parking uh, or something to allow wider sidewalks, but this would be a very expensive long-term project to be able to do something like that, but they may look into that for the future, especially, I guess, on West Market Street. Yeah, that's a wider street. You can, uh, my, and John had proposed some parallel parking way in the past for that area. So I don't know what the future is. For now, I think they want to get it done as quickly as possible. They were people, they had some little heaters and they were having flaffle today on the sidewalk with some little heaters in the little patio area. So people, you know, visitors are tough. They love to eat outside, even if it's cold. Um, and uh, but as I said, there's the have and have bats. It's not fair. It was part of your site plan. Market Street has nothing. 
Terrapin has some open space. Gigi has a big open space in the front yard. So each business had the site plan that they were came with. And if they came to amend their site plan, we'd have to figure out where could they put some additional outside seating, which wouldn't block the sidewalks or whatever. That, that's the long-term part of this. The short-term part is to get these people in the next few weeks, hopefully, um, uh, up and running by putting the, uh, the barricades back out there. I'd prefer the uh, water-filled versions rather than the Jersey barriers, but not the orange-colored ones. You know, they, if they come in different colors, it would be better. Well, I, I think you better drop a line to the mayor um, well, I think and they, make, and make that clear. I don't know. They're also nervous about, we're, we're not going to, we're not, I think, Lydia Mitch, we're not going to get that sign, the neon sign that said, you know, uh, slow down, uh, people eating in the street or whatever that sign says. Yes, that's, that's from DOT, yes. We're not going to get that sign either. So nobody's, uh, it's like nobody's going to help us this year. We have to figure out our own things. I think we Are should we? all take 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 turns hold holding the sign. Holding the sign out the there by uh, the village parking lot. There were a few accidents in Manhattan where people actually drove into the, but they drive into stores all over the place, all, all over the country. <laughs> Somebody drives into some building. So, just to give you an update on the committee. So oh. I have an update for the board. Uh, we received a formal uh, submission from 55 South Street. So I, I will be uh, reviewing that with um, the acting zoning enforcement officer um, to find out if, if the homeowner has fulfilled her um, obligation to submit the, the board all the required documentation and um, and go from there and hopefully she'll be on the agenda um, for March 6th for March 16th and we can get this uh, resolved this, this is the house that put the picture window in the front correct yeah. yes that's that, that, that that's correct well, yeah. so so help help me understand right what are they requesting what what, what are they submitting I I'm so they're familiar. submitting a site plan they're 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 making it legal now so, um, but they're working to make it le legal now. Um, so yeah, they'll be I, submitting a site plan a a a application for the window change. And then after that, they'll um, have to submit a building permit application. Because they, 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 Fenton signed them for two things. One, they did major renovations without a building permit. And two, they renovated a historic structure without coming to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Or start, put a picture window in, which is an issue that we have to deal with. Yeah. So, so what? They're they're submitting a, a request <laughs> that, that we consider approving a picture window, window in front of the house. I don't know. We have to see what they submit. They, they, it's, it's not allowed. Yeah. So essentially, you guys are going to have to determine the window that she installed. Is it compliant with, um, oh, it's chapter 120 dash, uh, whatever the window section is in the historic overlay district. I don't know, John, John Clark, do you have that handy? I can't remember which subsection it is yeah, well, under the historic overlay district well, section. Well, they have to submit for the, the measurements of the window on their submission. And it, I don't know what you can do. Can you put mullions? I don't know. Glue mullions to it? It does. It, it looks bad. That's going to have to be something that the mm -hmm. board discusses um, within um, within your review of her application. This okay. is to um, resolve the violation notice. Right. So you show it to Ms. Michelle. Is that her name? Again. Yes, Michelle. She's the acting zoning enforcement officer. Again, do we have uh, historic photos of that? It'd be helpful to bring that to the meeting if we have them. I will, I will have uh, something from uh, whatever is online with Dutchess County Parcel Access. Um, and, and the historic, the uh, 
a consortium of Rhinebeck History Reps that has the district. And we, Marilyn did a, a walkthrough in 2012. So we should have a 1979 photo and the 2012 photo of what that porch looked like. It's on the web if you want to look at it. You go to the Consortium of Rhinebeck History, it says Village Historic District, and type in 55 South Street, and you'll be able to see the 20, 1979 and the 2012. And I just got from Neil Lawson the photographs that he took, the 2019, 2020 photographs. And we have to have time when we get back to the library to have our webmaster add a third column with the 2020 photographs and the data about the building that Neil Larson uh, added. So we'll have for most of them in the village district, we'll have three notations, 79, 2012, and 2020. And for the new ones, we'll only have the 2020 information, the photographs. But that'll take us like a year to get up and running. We got volunteers to work on that. Is that house on Mulberry that was torn down? Is that in the historic district now? Uh, once the village board holds its public hearings and okay, so formally not, votes on it. Yeah. And, and the Swiss Chalet and the Black House will be in the historic district too, um, as well as the new house. I hope it's more tasteful than that that's going up on South Street. The, Mike, like, like it, you're on, Michael got a letter. He's on the State Historic Register and he's on the National Historic Register, but not on the Village <laughs> District yet until the Village Board votes to the expanded district. So everybody got a little confused because they got the letter saying, you're on the National Historic Register, congratulations. And they're not yet in the Village Historic District. They have, I guess they're quite busy with uh, the election and the budget now. Hopefully they'll get to this in the spring and get a vote on it. And then we will have to, these things will be listed as modern intrusions. We may have to make some modifications um, to it, as well as the brand new building that's going up. A new building that goes up in the historic district when it's completed would give us review rights on that new house that goes up, right? Unless they get foundations in the ground before it. I would think so. Where are they? There's a big hole now. Yeah. Have they filed building permits? Have they filed? What what location are are we talking about now? On uh, Mulberry between. Yes, they have filed. Uh, they have uh, filed building permits, um, and they will be filing soon uh, the building permit for uh, the single family dw dwelling that they're. That well, they're if they planning. submit the plans before the village board votes on it, then we're you know. We can only pray it's not a big black house with picture windows. Tinted black windows, yeah. Tinted black windows, no less. So yeah. I get up every morning looking at that big black house. Is that really the color it's going to be? It looks like it. Looks like it. I'd heard maybe that they were thinking of some sort of blue, but I, I don't know. I've never heard of a black primer. Yeah, so, yeah I don't know. Yeah, no, I, it, 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 it baffles me. Uh, <laughs> and the windows and, and... There's giant windows. I know because they, the, 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 the village board hasn't taken the action yet. So it's not in the village historic district yet. And we have no control over yeah. the black house or what's going up if they file. If the village board doesn't get to it till April or May, and they file the plans, then it's a pre-existing approval. I think possibly too, and this is obviously not set in stone, is because this is so new to some people that they may entertain trying to get the biggest audience they could. And obviously with COVID precautions, but in the nicer weather, possibly there could be a venue that allows for more space to people to attend because not everyone can participate on Zoom or whatever online platform, you know. Well, that depends on that the is picked. Well, you know, how, when, he's, when, he's uh, talking about amusement parks. There was a, bu a Buffalo Bills game. I mean, if we have an outside element and the weather is nice, 
Uh, you know, there's, so there's in the village parking lot. <laughs> uh, the village parking lot. There's the rec yeah. park. Uh, there's the pavilion at the rec park. There's the high school. I mean, uh, yeah. Who knows? You, you Who can knows? only speculate at this at this point. So, but the bottom line is, if they follow the plans, we can only pray they look better than the black house. Um, and uh, you know, we, we can only go from there. But uh, you know, we'll see what they do. But I'm sure they'll be sending a notice out. They said that they have a lot of budget hearings coming up in the next few weeks. So I guess they're you know they're really tied up. For the next month or so, and they can't probably take. Yes, it. our uh, fis fiscal year starts um, April May. 1st. In May, yeah. it's either a, a, a April or May. We're we're different. So they're not going to have time to do this till after the election, after the budget's decided upon. Then they can hold the election. You know, then they can hold this discussion, which you want to do before the summer comes, because then it's not good either, because a lot of people on vacation are not around. So, uh, like, we don't try to have any public hearings at the planning board in June, in July, and August. But they'll get it done, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Anybody have any other comments? Items for discussion. Well, since there's no uh, the bill has suspended the sign law, you know, with there's no. Uh, I mean, there's no discussion about if someone had a sandwich board, someone had this, someone had that, because that's what well, you know, we're I, out of business until next year. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but I tell you, some of the plows have really done a number uh, to some of those signs. I, I don't know what's going to be left of them come <clears throat> springtime, because I saw the sunflower got creamed by one of the plows. I don't know if someone left it out or what, but it was over in the snow snowbank, so. Well, it, I, I, had, uh, I, I had plowed my sidewalk on Market Street and then the, the uh, highway department, not ours, but the, the county or the state, whoever plows Market Street, that's Came through it like 50 miles an hour <laughs> and threw like a whole slush on everybody's sidewalk. And they don't even, I said, they don't even slow down at the intersections. They could crash into a car. If somebody was walking down the sidewalk, they might not have been found until the snow melt. So I told uh, Ka uh, uh, Kathy Kinsella about this about 10 years ago, and she made a phone call. So uh, I called the mayor about it. And he called me back and said, he, he called them and said, obey the speed limit, do 30 in the village and you won't, you know, bury somebody in the snow. <laughs> and the last time they came through, they were coming through, they were coming through slower. So I thank Gary for that um, because uh, it was crazy when, when they did it, you know, I was still working like 11, 12 years ago, commuting to the city. And I came back at night and I, nothing I could do. And if the slush had frozen to like a half a foot of ice. And it was that, it stayed like that until the spring. I couldn't do anything about the sidewalk. So uh, I thank Gary for making that phone call. Well, if there's nothing further, is there a motion to, to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, James. All right. For pitching in. Uh, James, I'll probably be in touch. Um, more than likely, uh, we will probably need you on March 16th. I don't believe, um, the trustee board will have a, a person, um, by next Tuesday. So okay. I, I would almost guess that this will probably go into April. So, um, I had a suggestion. Thank you again. And, and, I, and I called her up and said, you'd be great for the planning board. I, she said, I don't live here. I said, what do you mean? You live in the garden, the village, I mean, the uh, woods. I don't live in the woods. I live in the gardens. I'm, I'm in a different country. I can't be on your board. <laughs>